Um, so Todd, thank you for telling me that that thing's called a callback. I usually never do this, uh, but I see a few new faces, so I would normally tell like a type five, but this is too cool to pass up. Um, so this is, so last week, here's a brief <laughs> intro to my gimmick. I got, okay, yeah, sorry. You, 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 can already, you can already tell it's been a long Monday so far. So gimmick is I'm in law school and I work for a judge in criminal court and we had a murder trial on. Last week, I was introduced to the most racist old lady I've ever met in my life because she said that it, you know she would never be able to give the defendant a fair trial if they were black. She just overtly said that on record in front of people. And much like uh, Grammy award-winning artist uh, Slim Shady, guess who's back? It's this bitch. So, <laughs> no, she was there again. This is, oh, man. So I walk in, and I see this racist old lady. And I was like, yo, she's already played a race card. Like, I don't think she can be this racist again. But sure enough, but sure enough. And he kind of looked how Josh is, honestly. <laughs> is that, that gimmick? <laughs> no, but they ask her. They ask her, hey, you know, could you, could you give a fair shake? Could you, you know, be, you know, in, you know, uh, unbiased, impartial? And she goes, if he's brown, he's going down. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> That's what she said. Oh, like, I can understand if you're, like, racist in your head or, like, meanly with your friends. <laughs> but, like, you can find this. This is on open court. Okay. So I was intrigued. I was like, I got to talk to this broad because no way you're this racist twice in a row. So I go and talk to her in the hallway. I go and I sit down and I go, ma'am. I'm not trying to be offensive. You know, you live your truth as best as you can. But why would you say something like that in front of all of these people? And she, I know she wanted to take like a big drag of a cig, but she looks at me and smiles and she says, they, I've been, oh, hold on, she said it too perfectly. I've been getting summoned to jury duty for the last 50 years and I'll be damned if I ever sit in that box. So I was like, so she's just, yeah, she's just being overtly racist to just constantly in jury duty. So if I see her again, I'll come and tell you guys about it. Uh, I did get to sit on for a murder trial, though, which was super spooky because they don't shackle the defendants. So a man who's been accused of murdering three uh, women and two children is like from me to where St. Thomas is, right? I'm not worried, though, because I've got my court officer, Kevin, right here. Kevin is like 96 years old. <laughs> But he's got a gun, so I feel safe. I was like, man, Kevin's my dog. Like, I'm safe. You know, okay. So I'm looking at the witness, at my judge. Witness, judge, prosecution. Witness, witness, prosecution, judge. Witness, prosecution, judge, witness, jury. And I turn, and I see the defendant. He's just chilling there. And I was like, I wonder how my dog Kevin's doing. I look, Kevin's doing a crossword. <laughs> the only thing preventing me from certain, I mean, dude, he's not shackled, not handcuffed. This guy could have ran up and made a jump at me. I was like, I'm safe. I got Kevin. Kevin doesn't give a shit. He's trying to find a four-letter word for bag. Ridiculous, man. I was, I was super mad. I was super upset. I'm trying to think how to, it really doesn't have an end. Oh, he, he was uh, declared not guilty. So like, you know, yeah, it's, well, we can talk about that after the show. Don't worry about that. That's, that's nothing crazy. But I did meet a super cute juror lady. And I hit on her, which was probably a bad move. But we started talking. I abused my power of that bad. Okay, so I'm talking to her, and I was just like, or she asked me, she goes, you know, what type of lawyer do you want to be? And I say, criminal lawyer. And she says, oh, that's so noble. Like, help defend indigent people? And I said, uh, yeah, that too. I didn't say a lawyer for criminals. I said criminal lawyer. Saul Goodman is my hero. I'm trying to take advantage of the laws. I got two things. Okay, so I, I took a gap year in between. I'll, I'll enjoy on this. I took a gap year in between undergrad and going to law school. And most people that work, and I worked as well, and I worked for MTSU's Disability and Access Center, which is basically disabled student services. And then I also worked in food services. But no funny jokes ever came out of me working food services. But I have one of the best stories of my life from working at MTSU. So I was raised Southern, and I was always told that if you're you know, eating, eating, eating food, that you should put your hand over your mouth like this so you can continue conversating. Because I didn't want to do this. This lady walked in, I had food in my mouth. I thought it would be very rude if I gave her like a finger, like, hold up, bitch, eating a sandwich. So I do this, and I put my hand over my mouth like so, so I can direct her. She had a very important question. She said, hey, where's Sarah's office? I have to talk to her now. But because I had food in my mouth, but I wanted to direct her, I go, get on your hole and you ain't right. That's what it sounded like, because I had food in my mouth. The lady walks here, basically we have another door to get out right about there, and I overhear her say, it's so nice they let them work here. 
I found out later she thought I was mentally retarded. And then I tried to tell her that I wasn't, but she caught me again with food in my mouth, so I just said, I'm not retarded. It was retarded. That's tough. That's tough, y'all, but it would happen. It was a real thing that happened to me. We're going to have a good show. Thank you, Gam Gam. <laughs>